I don't know anything about baseball. As a kid, I did hang out with some baseball players, but it's not like they ever really talked about it. I think they were just American, and that's what Americans do. They play baseball. And I was this small Asian boy that had never touched the sport in my life. But I actually have this really nice memory of one of those baseball friends teaching me how to play catch with an actual mitt. You know, stuff that your dad would do if he loved you. So a couple weeks ago, I decided to watch One Outs. That was a really great segue, I know. One Outs is the story of a gambler named Tokuchi Toa, who is approached by this professional baseball player named Kojima Hiromichi. They make a bet with each other in this baseball gambling game called One Outs, a game that Tokichi has never lost. The rules are simple. If Kojima can touch the ball that Tokichi pitches, he wins. Three strikes and you're out. They each put up stakes. Tokichi puts up his right arm, his pitching arm, and Kojima puts up his entire baseball career. If one were to lose, each person would be left unable to do what they're doing now for the rest of their lives. And Kojima wins. He ends up touching the ball, but not like in the baseball way. So Tokichi, being the honorable gambler that he is, offers up his right arm, and instead of breaking it, Kojima brings Tokichi into the professional baseball league to pitch for his team, the Lee Cons, a team that has never won the big boy trophy, the championship. They need some help. And this is when you realize that One Outs is not about baseball. It's actually about trying your hardest to not play baseball. This is not a baseball anime. I mean, come on, does that really look like baseball to you? Does this really look like baseball to you? Like, come on, is this baseball right here? Are we, are we looking at, what, what are we looking at? I've always loved shows that over explain and big bazongas, which is why anime is perfect for me because it is a medium that is created on over explaining things. Whether it's every single character's thoughts and perspective in Hunter x Hunter or eating a singular fucking potato chip in Death Note. I've always loved that aspect about anime. And can we get this out of the way real quick? It is such a boomer take to be like, oh, they just explain everything. Why can't the characters just fight? I just want to see them fight, but they do so much talking. It hurts my brain. Ouchie, ouch, ouchie, ouch. <laughs> That's what makes it good. That's what gives these fight scenes depth. Intertwining exposition and dialogue within a scene adds so much weight and value to the show. And if you don't have that, then you just have God of High School. And we all know what happens to the story of God of High School. If you just want to watch action, go watch Transformers and see how soulless it is because that's what you want. And I'll sit over here enjoying One Outs because it is that good over explaining type beat that gets my shit hard. As soon as Tokichi enters the league, he is faced with another situation where he must gamble. The owner of the League Cons doesn't want to pay Tokichi a normal player's salary since he was just picked up off the dirty streets of LA. So instead of taking a garbage contract, Tokichi proposes a new one. Every time he gets a player out, the owner must pay him 5 million yen. However, every time he lets a player score, Tokuchi must pay the owner 50 million yen. Of course, the owner accepts because the terms are heavily weighted in his favor, but what Tokuchi doesn't know is that the owner is also a gambler, and this relationship between these two is what fuels the fire of one-outs. It is the story of Tokuchi taking this mediocre team to the championship and beating the owner all by using his big-ass brain and high IQ from all those years playing Brain Age on the DS. And speaking of games, recently I've been playing this game with my friends called Tricky Towers, and if you've watched any Ludwig stream ever, you already know this one. It's basically Tetris, but not Tetris at all, because unlike Tetris, where the blocks snap together and can kind of just float in midair, in Tricky Towers, the blocks have actual weight in physics, so building a tower with a horrible foundation can make everything tip over, losing all your progress. There's different modes, my favorite is Race, where you go against three other players to reach the finish line, and it is the true test to see who can build the trickiest tower. It's also the mode where you see the most towers fall down, and it's always fun to watch that happen. No, 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 It's all weird. Stop. No. I think I like this game so much because, well, you're putting shapes together, and the satisfaction I get from doing that is sort of similar to how I felt watching One Outs. How will Tokuchi use mind games this time to win the match? That is the question I ask myself every time, and that is the question that was answered every time. It's fun to watch smart characters be smart. 
I first realized this after watching Sid the Science Kid. And then after watching more shows, I figured out that this is actually a type of character that I really like. Every time Tokuchi figures something out and is able to manipulate the game in his favor, it's like placing a foundational piece in Tricky Towers. And it's not like he's an underdog like Kaiji. Kaiji's from another gambling anime called Kaiji, the Ultimate Survivor, where Kaiji has this big ass debt and is given a chance to race it or gain a lot more depending on how he fares against other opponents in the same situation. And if Kaiji is a little sailboat humbly sailing his way through the seas, then Tokuchi is a giant ass cruise ship that just flattens everybody who's in his way. There's really no contest and he does it in multiple different ways. He'll fuck with the opponent's mind by using his words like he's Ben Shapiro doing a section about rap music. He'll consciously change the amount of spins on the ball when he throws each pitch. He'll pull out some random ass baseball rule and fine print that'll pull the game in his favor. It really was just flat out amusing to see what Tokuchi had in store. It felt like I was watching Go Go Gadget and every episode he would just pull out some crazy shit loosely pertaining to baseball and the crowd would go wild, which was just me sitting in my room getting giddy at the slightest thing happening. In one of the episodes, Tokuchi has to manipulate the manager who is this short, stubby, balding dude that no one takes seriously and Tokuchi's able to convince him to do anything by just offering large sums of money, which is probably the most realistic part of the show. But yeah, he's a really funny character. Itaguchi is another good one. While watching, I was like, why do I like this guy so much? And then I found out he's voiced by the same dude who voices all these people. So yeah, that's why. He's really cool because he's likable in that speed wagon sort of way where he kind of just reacts to everything Tokuchi does with such amazement and curiosity while also being down to work with any of his out of pocket ideas. Like there's a point where Tokuchi just starts explaining division to the entire team. And that's when I ascend it into an ethereal plane because anime was just straight up teaching me math. Also brain age on the DS. And I expect nothing less from Peak Madhouse, which is the studio that made this anime. Around this time, they were putting out other bangers like Stitch with an exclamation point at the end. Uh, the Maple Story special, still gotta get into that one, heard it was really good. Uh, Kaiba, I'm gonna be honest, I watched like a fourth of an episode, thought it was really weird and then quit. But yeah, peak madhouse, and one ounce is definitely up there. Surprisingly, this show still gets brought up a pretty decent amount. I swear, I see it mentioned on Reddit every so often. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand one ounce. I think for the people that have seen it, the show just sticks in your mind and you wanna talk about it because we all know it hits different and this video is basically just to share that. But the sad part is, and this is probably my only complaint, One Out's never got a season two. It's an anime hell right now. You think for how often I hear it leave someone's mouth, it would have gotten some sort of continuation by now, but no. And you guys should know, I love reading manga. This should be a joyride for me. But the art is kind of just, eh. Like, for some reason, I feel like I would prefer the original One Punch Man art over this. It's not even like it's really bad or anything. I just think I would be bored looking at it. Like one second, I'd be thinking about if this dude is gonna hit the pitch or not. And then next I'd be like, me, 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 I wonder what's for dinner tomorrow. At the end of the day, I really can't do anything but complain on my YouTube channel, so that's exactly what I'll do. <laughs> Why? Why didn't get a second season? Why? <laughs> You're also going to want to play Brain Age on the DS. 